And we are joined now by the Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. Mr. Speaker, good morning to you. Good morning. Sir, have you had a chance to speak with the former president since this happened and, and just share your thoughts as we gather here on a, a, just a stunning morning? It is. America awakens to a rather surreal morning. This is a horrific act of political violence that ought to be roundly condemned. Uh, obviously, we, we can't go on like this as a society. Um, you know, our prayers are with President Trump, all the rally attendees, certainly the family of the individual that lost their life and those who were injured. Uh, we uh, have gotten briefings from uh, law enforcement. I spoke to Secretary Mayorkas last night and asked him some pointed questions with regard to Homeland Security and what happened there. I've already announced that Congress will do a full investigation of the tragedy yesterday to determine where there were lapses in security and anything else that the American people need to know and deserve to know. But in the meantime, uh, we've got to turn the rhetoric down. We've got to turn the temperature down in this country. We need leaders of all parties on both sides to call that out and make sure that happens so that we can go forward and, and maintain our free society that we all are blessed to have. Amen to that. Speaker Johnson, good morning. Once we learned that the president was okay, thank goodness he was injured, but safe. And once you had that information, I wonder what your first thoughts were when you saw the president get up, pump his fist. What were you thinking? Well, it was a show of strength. I mean, I've spent a lot of time with President Trump. I sent him a text immediately. I knew that he wouldn't see it for some time. But to just tell him that it, obviously we all saw what seems to be a miracle. I mean, I believe that God spared him. And that bullet went just apparently a millimeter from um, doing real and permanent damage to him or perhaps taking his life. And uh, it's just kind of a, a surreal thing. But I know him well. He has a, an inexhaustible reservoir of energy and strength. That's almost inexplicable to us sometimes, uh, but he'll keep fighting, and he should. And look, th Willie, this this is an important point to make. I, I saw the you were showing some of the text messages of my colleagues in the Senate, the House. Um, th they pointed out that the rhetoric has just been over the top. It really has. I mean, th there's no figure in American history, at least in the modern era, maybe since Lincoln, who's been so vilified and 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 really persecuted by media and you know Hollywood elites, uh, political figures, you know, even the legal system. And when, when the message goes out constantly that the election of Donald Trump would be a threat to democracy and that the republic would end, I mean, it, it heats up the environment. We cannot do that. It's simply not true. Everyone needs to turn the rhetoric down. Agreed. And what is your message? Because you talked about some of the rhetoric that is uh, focused on Donald Trump. We don't have, we could give you many examples, of course, of rhetoric very incendiary against President Biden. There's now concern. And I wonder what your concern is about what happens next and whether or not some of the president's former president's supporters may want to engage in some kind of retaliation. How concerned are you just for the political environment as you call for both sides to calm down? Well, uh, it, it is a heated political environment on both sides, as you noted. When I came to Congress in January 2017, I, I came to Washington the same time President Trump did. Uh, my colleagues and I, a handful of us, started a, a group we called the Honor and Civility Caucus. The idea being that, look, we can disagree, but we have to do it in an agreeable manner. You know, we don't hate people inside the building. Um, you have political opposition and political opponents, but we're all Americans, and we have to treat one another with dignity and respect. We, we can have um, heated political discourse and debates, but it shouldn't be personal and we shouldn't be targeting people. I mean, look, President Biden himself said in recent days, it's time to put a, a, a bullseye on, on Trump. I mean, I, I know that he didn't mean what is being implied there, but that kind of language on either side um, should be called out. And, and we have to make clear that, that this is part of our system. We can have vigorous debate, but it needs to end there. Mr. Speaker, you mentioned the investigation you called for almost immediately last night into what exactly happened last night. I think everybody wants some answers about how a man was able to get in an elevated position 150 yards from the former president of the United States and take these shots and, as you said, kill someone and injure two others in addition to the president. What answers will you be looking for in that investigation? Well, some are obvious. I mean, uh, I asked 
Secretary Mayorkas last night, my first question is, were, was drone, were drones being used in the vicinity? I mean, that would be an obvious thing. You would be able to spot someone on a roof. Um, he didn't know when I asked him that question last night. Um, and that doesn't mean it didn't happen, but he didn't know last night. Um, uh, we need to know, how could uh, an individual be at that elevation that was seen by, apparently, bystanders on the ground? Yeah. How could not that not be noticed by uh, by Secret Service? I, lots more questions than answers this morning. Speaker Mike Johnson, we will continue to follow it, of course. Thank you for spending some time with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.